Hey there, it's a mechanic guy from Afternoon Garage. So today you can see we're working on this Pontiac Solstice again. Gonna be working on something pretty complicated, the air conditioning system. So if you don't know too much about HVAC, it's okay. Just follow along. Welcome back, Afternoon Garage. So today, we'll be looking at the Solstice again. Uh, this time I'm going to be working on a problem that was there since I bought the car. So now when I bought the car, test drive went along pretty well. It was in the summertime, you know, and I didn't have the defrost or the air conditioning on and kind of took it for a hard test drive to, you know, make sure the transmission was okay and, you know, everything else kind of ran all right. But uh, never did turn the air conditioning system on nor the defroster. Well, later on that evening, I pulled into a department store, pulled in there, and I heard this terrible noise. You know, the car was only several hours old at that point, so I was really kind of disappointed that, huh, oh, it's making just this terrible noise, and, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to see exactly what it was at the time. So I kind of started messing around with the controls on the dash and uh, turned the defrost off. Well, when I did that, the noise went away. So I got out of the car, I lifted the hood, Looked in there, when the engine was running, couldn't hear anything. Turned the defrost back on, made that terrible rattling noise again. I wasn't too upset because I knew it was probably had something to do with the air conditioning system. Because when you turn the defrost on, well, the air conditioning comes on as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now it might have been kind of hard to hear. That sound is like a rattling noise. Now what I've done is I've tracked it down to the heater controls. So if I turn on the defrost, for instance, which it was that day that I heard the noise, then the noise starts. Kind of a rattle, 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 rattle. It doesn't stop until, well, I turn the heater off. There it goes, the noise has disappeared. It also happens when the air conditioning is on. I think it's time to take a look at that air conditioning compressor. Well, now you can see that noise really wasn't that bad. Um, just really kind of makes it under, you know, you can see when I switch the dash control to air conditioning or defrost, the clutch kicked on and it started making a rattling noise. So I suspect I have a problem with the air conditioning compressor. <laughs> Underneath the car here, the, the air conditioning compressor is right here. And I'm kind of pushing on the clutch a little bit. Sometimes it'll move from side to side. Doesn't really feel like anything's really bad in here, but there was a noise coming from it. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and change it. Well, you can see I didn't find much movement in that clutch mechanism there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the clutch, but you know what, this air conditioning compressor has, you know, 177,000 miles on it, something like that. So it probably needs to be replaced. You know, there's internal bearings in there and kind of stuff that wears out. So I think I'm gonna order up a whole new air conditioning compressor, change it out today. So let's go over all the tools you're gonna need to do this. This is ridiculous. All right, I've kind of assembled all the tools that you'll need to actually complete this job correctly, which includes a refrigerant recovery machine, a tank for that that's rated for the type of refrigerant you're going to use, in this case R134A. Um, you're going to need to have a scale to measure exactly what comes out of there, a typical manifold gauge set, and a vacuum pump. Draw a vacuum on both this before you start, and also draw a vacuum on the entire system in the car to make sure you don't have any leaks or anything like that. I know what you're saying. That's a huge amount of equipment to do just a simple job like that. Is all this really necessary? The answer is yes it is. So in today's cars we have Freon called R134A. It's a non-CFC depleting ozone type of refrigerant. It's supposed to be good for the atmosphere. We used to use R12, which is not good, and you especially don't want to vent that to the atmosphere. But you know, since this doesn't deplete the ozone layer, is this okay to vent to the atmosphere? The EPA would say no. It's not. So definitely 
Don't open the hood, stick a needle in the Schrader valve, and do something like this. Not gonna be real easy to let the smoke out of this son of a bitch. Just take this little bitty right here, stick it in the hole. Let that smoke out. No, definitely don't do that. Yes, folks, that is against the law to do something like that. That's kind of why you need this tank to store it in and uh, this refrigerant recovery machine, which is just basically a air conditioning system in its own in a box, you know, which will pull the fluid out, put it in here. Well, not only that, if you do it cleanly and safely and you have a clean, dry system, well, you can store your Freon in here and then pop it right back into the system when you're done. That saves a lot of money because even R134A, it's not very cheap. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull a vacuum on this cylinder right here. Now this is a new cylinder, so uh, it hasn't ever been used before. It's got a nitrogen charge in it. So what we want to do is we want to pull a vacuum, pull it down to negative 30, leave it there for a few minutes, close off the valves, make sure that there's nothing in here. Then we'll hook up our manifold gauge set and then purge those lines. And then we'll use the refrigerant recovery machine to actually pull the refrigerant out of the system into the bottle. We're also going to weigh it so we can weigh and see what comes out. Now what's supposed to be in there is 1.68 pounds of refrigerant according to this chart. So hopefully we have something close to that coming back out. Let's get started. First thing you do, since this is a new tank, is pull a vacuum on it. And then once we reach a complete vacuum, we'll shut it off, make sure it doesn't leak and we can do that using the manifold gauge set. We'll just use the low pressure side here and that needle should swing all the way down to negative 30 and uh, when we shut this off it should stay there. Hopefully. Make sure all your fittings are tight. And open the valve and let it suck. Eleven minutes later. Well, we're going to close this off, and then that's going to close off the pump line here, and shut the pump off. Now we shouldn't see that needle there move at all. One hour later. All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll close this valve off on the cylinder here. This thing's ready to use. What you want to do is we're going to go around and make sure all these fittings are real tight before you go and open any of these valves up. One thing that's really important about this is to make sure that there's no oxygen left in these lines. So what that involves is taking the high and low side valves, opening them up, making sure they go through the refrigerant recovery machine all the way to the gas bottle and then crack the line to the gas bottle. And uh, listen for a change in sound and that'll tell you when you got the Freon all the way through the system. Do not put oxygen into that bottle. You put oxygen into that bottle and you mix the cylinder that has Freon in it with oxygen, you've just contaminated your Freon. Don't do that. So let's evacuate this thing. Keep an eye on that scale. See how much refrigerant was in this car. All right, high side coming on. Now the low side. Now what we'll do is we'll open the high side and low side and uh, let everything kind of flow into the refrigerant recovery machine. Okay, we're going to open this partially. This is your input here. You can see that came up. Now what we have is the Freon is going in here, through here, to our recovery cylinder. So what you want to make sure and do, like I said before, is open this up for a few seconds. There we go. You can hear it sounded just a little bit different there. 
So now we'll open this line up. What this is going to do is it's going to start taking Freon from the vehicle. Even though we don't have this thing on, it's going to equalize in pressure. And we'll turn the recovery machine on at this point. The refrigerator goes into the recovery cylinder here. You're going to start to see that number go up. So you can see it's at 16.7. Uh, The vehicle's empty. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later. All right, you can see now that uh, that's at zero right here, close to negative thirty. I think we're going to do now is uh, go ahead and shut this thing off. Looks like the scale says we have 17.67 pounds. That'd be like uh, it had 1.2, 1.3 pounds of free on it there. That was a little short. Well, it looks like we pulled about a pound and a quarter from this car. Uh, that's a little short of what it should have in it. You know, unfortunately, you know, these cans, they come in 12 ounces, so probably going to have to use, well, half a can or something like that and, you know, trash the rest. Probably don't want to overfill these things too much, but uh, that was kind of low. Even though I did crack it and uh, release just a little bit of Freon, really shouldn't have been that low. So now we can start tearing the compressor out of this car, get that thing replaced. bolts really kind of stuck in there so looked on the internet took somebody's advice took the engine mount bolts off jacked up the engine a little bit with the transmission jack yet I still can't get at that bolt in there you know, I think the best thing to do, the rack is in the way. 
I didn't want to do this. I don't normally like to take anything that has to do with the steering off because, you know, usually I need an alignment after that. But uh, I think the rack's going to have to come off in order to get at that bolt down there. <laughs> out you know that uh, took quite a bit of time to take out you know that bottom bolt was just ridiculous you know I've been told that this was a pretty easy job I'd have to disagree with that I think my new air conditioning compressor is here let's go look at it compare it to this see if it'll bolt right in Right here are the two compressors. You can see it has a little bit different part number on it. In fact, quite a bit different part number on it. Uh, the model number of the unit's the same. But I think what happened here is he said some bearings internally that would kind of go out after a while. And in fact, I've heard of people getting only like 10, 15,000 miles on the air conditioning compressor right after they bought the car in 2006, 2007. By the way, this is supposedly an upgraded model, uh, just kind of comparing the two, everything looks the same. We're going to need some seals right here, and you can also see that that kind of has a yellow tint to it, which means there was probably some dye put in the system, maybe to troubleshoot, uh, maybe to troubleshoot a leaky condenser or something like that. Not really quite sure why that is, but there is some AC work done on it, other than what was done in the factory. So here's the clutch. The clutch kind of looks looks to be about the same here. It only made noise when the air conditioning was on. So it's probably something internal inside of the unit that broke. So one question I did have is, is that the total system takes about four ounces of oil. So it should be a couple ounces of oil in this thing. These things usually come pre-oiled. So where I bought it from, I kind of looked it up and Sure enough, the answer I got was these come pre-oiled or look at your information sheets that they gave you with the new compressor. Well, they never gave me any information sheets with this. So I'm kind of at a loss to figure out whether or not it was charged with oil. So I guess we're just going to have to kind of figure that out. So loosen this up in here. These ports look awfully dry to me. Um, in fact, they're bone dry. So one way to tell if this thing's pre-oiled, you know, you got to have to have some oil in here. Most of the oil will collect in here. Maybe uh, two, three ounces of oil will actually stay in the compressor. The rest will be kind of distributed throughout the system. But uh, kind of spin it around here, and you can see no oil coming out of there. So now, if I would have followed some advice I got online, I would have found out that. Uh, after some time, this compressor might have failed because there's simply no oil in there and uh, this compressor requires at least about a couple ounces to, uh, to lubricate it. So, 
Lesson learned, don't believe what you hear online. Uh, the oil type would be PAG 46. So I just happened to have some uh, on a previous air conditioning job that I did. So uh, PAG 46 for R134. I believe I just have just about two, two and a half, three ounces in here. So we'll be adding it to the suction side of this compressor. And just kind of spin it around and make sure that this oil gets in there before you ever install it. Might be a good idea after you do install it, put this cap back on here while you're putting the compressor in so that this oil doesn't leak out of here. I got the compressor back in here. Gonna hook all the air conditioning lines up to the manifold. Put a vacuum on it. Make sure I have no leaks before I put everything back together. All right, we'll let this thing pull a vacuum for a few minutes. And I'll shut those valves off and uh, yeah, let it uh, do its thing for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Shouldn't see that needle climb at all in that period of time. And you know, you leak free. We can move on, put everything back together, start putting Freon in this thing. Get anxious to get this job over with. One hour later. Okay, you can look at the pressure from the low side here. You can see that needle hasn't moved at all. It's been about half an hour, 45 minutes. I don't know, maybe a little longer than that. Be real confident, putting the whole thing back together. All right, got that alternator put back in, got the intake on, kind of buttoned up everything here, made sure I plugged everything back in. Now you have lots of wiring that has to be plugged back in in order to get the car to start. The reason we have to get the car to start is because uh, that's how this thing accepts Freon. So what I've done here is I've disconnected the line off of here and we can look down in here and see it says 17.42 pounds. So I, when I started out with 16.41 pounds, so it looks like I recovered exactly a pound refrigerant out of this system that's supposed to have 1.6, 1.7. So I'll be needing a can of uh, this is a DuPont refrigerant, it's R134A, with no lubrication, because remember, we lubricated the pump manually by itself. So now what we're going to do, is we're going to get the car fired up, the air conditioning system turned on, you don't expect to hear the clutch on until it reaches that minimum pressure level, and then the clutch will actually turn on and you'll kind of hear it start to cycle. That's a good thing, that means it's accepting the refrigerant. One thing you want to make sure and do is, once again, Never put any oxygen into the system. So when you open this bottle up, and before you crack those valves on that manifold, take that line and release just a little bit of Freon, bend just a little bit of Freon into the atmosphere until you hear a change in the sound. That way you can make sure you have no oxygen in the lines going to the manifold. You can make sure you're putting just R134 in your system. Let's see how well that new air conditioner compressor we put in works. go. First shot off the low side. Uh, 
these cans kind of get cold and the fluid doesn't transfer very well. What I usually use is a pan of just really hot water. Stick the whole thing in there. Hey, here you go, here's your can of refrigerant. Sure, this is unscrewed all the way, it has a little needle in there that punches the end of it. Back it off. We have this valve closed. We're going to purge. Okay. We'll open up the low side valve. This thing instantly starts getting cold in my hand as it's transferring R134 through the system to the compressor, the low side. Can actually feel this bubbling a little bit. The purpose of the hot water is kind of stick it in there. When you do that, you can see the low side pressure jump up drastically. 15 minutes later. Feels pretty empty. I think I'm getting to the end of it. That should be pretty close to uh, 1.7, 1.8 pounds, something in that neighborhood. I had one pound in there and all three quarters in here. The pressures are looking pretty good too. And also you can hear the air conditioning clutch click on and off. Check and see if I got cold air coming out the vents. All right, how's that feel? See, that wasn't too hard of a project. Yeah, it took a lot of equipment, and you know, the internet really wasn't correct about those air conditioning compressor bolts that were quite a drag. But you know, once you get those out, the whole thing's just like any other air conditioning system. And uh, blows cold now. Be good for summertime. If you like content like this, please subscribe. More videos to come.